Well, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Kirsten Moore and I'm the Associate Athletic Director here at Westmont College uh, and also serve as a women's basketball coach. Um, but for, um, I think over a decade now, I have been emceeing uh, probably the most special night in Westmont athletics each year. And that is our Golden Eagle Awards Banquet. Um, this year, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, we have, uh, we're really in a unforeseen situation uh, where we're not able to hold the banquet in person. Um, but as an athletic department, we felt so strongly uh, that this night is so important that we felt like we needed to find a way um, to be creative, uh, to be problem solvers, and to still have an opportunity to celebrate the incredible student athletes that we have here at Westmont College. Um, and so tonight we're going to do that um, virtually um, so that we can come to the living rooms of our students and their families, but also people um, really all over um, on social media or, or wherever uh, so that these stories can be shared because um, the things that happen in the life of a Westmont College athlete um, and these student athletes in particular uh, are, are stories that we don't want to miss. Um, this year uh, is our 26th year of celebrating Golden Eagles. And, uh, and what is a Golden Eagle Award winner? Um, you know, we about, so 26 years ago now, the president of our college, David Winter, he and his wife, along with Pete and Gerd Giordano, um, were talking about ways to honor what's best and most important to us at Westmont. And that is not only that we have um, success out on the athletic fields, but that in the classroom that our student athletes are thriving and also that outside of the classroom um, as well as inside just everywhere that we have people that we are putting out into the world that are people of high character and uh, that really have um, have exemplary um, characteristics that will lead them um, to be leaders in our community in different ways. And, uh, and all of the uh, young men and women that you hear from today that are receiving these awards are exemplary um, in all three of those areas, that they haven't just excelled in the athletic arena, but more importantly, in the classroom and in um, just in life and how they've carried themselves and how they have, um, have been great teammates and great citizens and will continue to go out into the world and make the world a better place. So uh, we are here to celebrate that again this year, um, you know, in spite of various different circumstances that we're all under. Um, I want to say congratulations to all of you award winners and uh, we are just really proud of you. And even though we can't be in one room together celebrating this, uh, we celebrate you today and we're really grateful for uh, the roles that you've played um, on all of our athletic teams and also in the greater Westmont um, community and on campus. Um, tonight, um, we are going to have pretty much the same lineup of events. Um, we are going to hear from our athletic director who is going to share with you some highlights from this year and some things that we've talked about as far as kind of theme and teaching within our athletic department. Um, and then you'll get the opportunity to hear from coaches who introduce their student athletes who then share a piece of their stories with us. Um, we have so many people that help um, make these stories happen. It's not um, just confined to athletics. We're really grateful for the role that our administration plays and our professors play um, in helping create um, just the overall student athlete experience that's so special here at Westmont. We celebrate the best of that tonight um, and we are grateful um, to have these student athletes to, to shine and uh, to represent Westmont College Athletics. Welcome to the 2020 Westmont Golden Eagle Awards. My name is Dave O'Dell and I'm the athletic director here. Uh, it's my 11th year in that position. Every year I start off the Golden Eagle talking about the past year. But this year I want to remind you of how, what I shared last year at the beginning of the Golden Eagle. I talked about how we had a number of strong performances, but it was a year of challenges. It was full of the unusual, the unexpected, there were many disappointments, and a bit more pain and loss than we were used to suffering. 
We drew solace from the fact that these adversities we'd faced last season were going to give us strength that we could draw from for this year. And boy, did we draw strength. The 1920 season um, at Westmont was shaping up to be one of the finest in school history, if not the finest. Here are some quick highlights. Our teams had amassed a 75.3% winning percentage. This is the highest known in school history. We had won five of seven GSAC championships. Our GSAC champs were men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, and volleyball who made a historic run to the national championship match. We were well on our way to our eighth straight GSAC All Sports Award, and we were trending towards a return to the top 10 in the Learfield Directors' Cup. Then it all came to a screeching halt. Championships canceled, spring season suspended, then everybody disperses, and then everything's canceled. Here we go again, more hardship, more adversity, more unexpected change. Especially hard hit were the seniors participating in the spring sports. They saw a likely end to their careers in such an abrupt way. Again, I draw confidence from the fact that this group of Westmont Golden Eagles, their teammates, and all those that came before them know how to deal with these types of trials because they've learned so much of how to deal with that at Westmont. They've learned that through their classrooms. They've also learned that through their competition on the track, on the court, on the field, on the golf course, and in the pool. James 1 says, count it all joy when you meet various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance finish its work so that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. The group you're going to hear from in our virtual Golden Eagle all have been refined by the trials, and they will continue to endure. I hope that you will draw strength from their stories. Eric Liddell had that great quote, when I run I feel God's pleasure. It's totally that way, it's totally true. There'll be times when I'm just out on a run and you look around, you see the mountains, you see just the beauty that's in Santa Barbara and you're just out with God and his creation and you feel that sense of calm, sense of peace, sense of joy. Super, super special. Athletics at Westmont really is about treating the playing field and the playing court as a laboratory for life lessons. And so we think that everything that happens on the court or on the field is something that can be translated to real life. Now one of the biggest things Westmont teaches through sports is discipline. And luckily our goal is to be Christ-centered, so it actually is kind of a spiritual discipline. Ultimately you play because you enjoy it. Uh, you also want to win, so there's that. There's a strong tradition and expectation of honor and integrity and responsibility, and all of those things are life skills that they learn. I definitely think that our unity and having humility towards one another is definitely embedded in like a Christian faith that Westmont provides. Things that we're focusing on this year are gratitude, grit, character, and integrity, and how we can incorporate that in their daily life. So we really focus on a holistic approach to these athletes. It's not just about how fast they are in the pool and getting a 4.0 GPA, but really who they are as people and how we can prepare them for the rest of their lives. My coach has a philosophy about why we do athletics, and it's number three on the list. First thing is our relationship with God here at Westmont. Second is academics and then athletics. I really believe that what Westmont gives to students, not just student athletes, but all students, is really above any other educational offering that's out there. And I think what Westmont does is just second to none.
I am Lindsay Connolly, the Assistant Cross Country Coach here at Westmont, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to Sarah Claude, the Women's Cross Country Golden Eagle recipient. Like all of our athletes being awarded, Sarah is a very determined and high achieving individual. She's an Augustinian scholar and has been a GSAC scholar athlete every semester she has been eligible for it. Sarah participated in a summer research program at Westmont in 2018 and, his wor and her work has been published in two separate papers dealing with chemistry topics I would struggle to comprehend. The past four years, Sarah has balanced school and athletics, setting high expectations for herself in both areas. And some of my favorite conversations with Sarah have been where she's worked out and learned how to appropriately uh, balance that student-athlete life dynamic. As cross-country co-captain, Sarah's leadership was one of encouragement. Through encouragement, she was able to get everyone excited to achieve the team's common goal. And this year, Sarah knew that if she was going to be a factor in the team's success, then she was going to have to lead by example. And so I want to share one story that really sticks out to me from this past season about Sarah. We were setting goals, getting ready for the upcoming Masters University Invitational, and I typically have athletes set their overall outcome goal along with three process goals they focus on in the race. Sarah's outcome goal was about a minute faster than she had ever run before, a goal she had the training behind her to accomplish, but hadn't done so yet in a race. She knew she was going to have to risk a little of herself to run the time she wanted. We all know that athletics doesn't come with any guarantee. No matter how much work and training we do, we might not get the outcome we desire. But what we can do is physically and mentally prepare to do our best when the situation presents itself. And that's exactly what Sarah did for this race. One of Sarah's three process goals for the race was simply run like you have run that fast before. She approached that race as if she had already run the time she wanted, she just had to do it again, nothing new. She took a risk to race more uncomfortably than she had typically does, and with the inner confidence that she could do it. I'm delighted to tell you that Sarah accomplished her goal that day. Her example of how to approach the race, the risk she took to accomplish her goal, and the inner confidence she found is an example I will use for years to come. It has been a delight to get to know Sarah the past four years, and I am pleased to introduce her to you. Thank you, Coach Connolly, for the introduction, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Throughout my years at Westmont, running on cross country and track, I've really been amazed at the camaraderie that has formed between the cross country and track teams. Um, and I think one example of that um, came across in an activity that we did during track retreat this year um, called the 10 Second Talent Show, where Almost every team member got up and formed a 10 second talent that they had in mind that they could do in 10 seconds, whether that be a hand balancing trick or tying their shoe or whipping up ingredients of guacamole. Um, even if it was as, something as simple as tying your, their shoe, we all went wild with cheering for them. Um, and I think that's a really good example of the environment that Coach Smelly and the other coaches have created of an environment where your teammates support you and um, encourage you to do your best and even if you don't do your best um, they're still there for you and they're still there to help you pick back up and to encourage you to do your best and they'll be proud of you no matter how you compete whether it's your best race or your worst race um, so thank you coach smelly for helping create the environment um, and for encouraging everyone and challenging everyone to get to know the names of everyone on the team uh, thank you for all the times that we've met to talk in your office um, whether it be about life or running. Um, and thank you for the ominous question of what do you need? Because it's helped me to think about asking for help and what kind of help I actually do need in any moment. Um, thank you, Coach Connolly, for talking with me and walking with me all those times um, and for meeting with me to watch me <laughs> watch my hurdle form when I didn't have, when I wasn't at practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays this semester. Um, Thank you to all the professors that have encouraged me throughout my academic semesters. Um, thank you to Dr. Guntrell for hanging out with me and doing research with me. 
Um, thank you to all the other chemistry professors. Um, and thank you for all, to all the other non-chemistry professors. It's been fantastic. Thank you for meeting with me to talk about tests. Thank you for meeting with me to talk about homework strategies um, and studying habits. Um, I think the most impactful thing in my experience at Westmont has been the relationships I've formed. Um, yes, with my friends and yes, with my teammates, but also with my coaches and my professors. So thank you. I'm pleased to introduce Michael Oldak as the Cross Country Golden Eagle Award recipient this year. Michael is one of the uh, finest runners in the history of Westmont College as a miler and as a cross country runner. He led his team very aptly to th uh, three uh, second place finishes in the GSAC. He also uh, was an All-American as a junior. He was an All-American in the mile three times and in the relay one time. So on the credentials as an athlete, he meets that uh, magnificently. He's also an Augustinian scholar. And what made him an Augustinian scholar besides his intellect was his very incisive ability to demand great things of himself, to dig deep into things and to read well, to ask good questions, to talk to people, to seek out mentors. And in that, he became truly a student and an athlete at Westmont College, one of the finest, I think. Michael is a very critical person in himself uh, and high expectations when he started as a, an athlete on the team and as I got to know him as a, a student and as a, an individual. And it took a while for us to get him to a point where he could give himself credit for the hard work he did and the uh, victories and sometimes the second places or the losses in his mind that he incurred. But over time, he became more reflective and introspective and that made him a better person and a better athlete. So through his athletics and through the examination that goes on in the academic uh, side of his life, he truly started to grow and become a more full person. Our conversations went from angst over performance to evaluative and how can I learn from this and what can I do about this and how can I give to others. So in every way, uh, Michael Oldak is a scholar athlete and I feel like he's going to be a friend of mine for life. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to say a few words that I hope reach their intended ears. To the seniors, I'm sorry about the way this year has ended. It hurts to lose a season, and I feel that as well. To the men's and women's basketball teams, congratulations on your success this year. I wish I could have seen you both lift the national championship trophies. And to Coach Moore, congratulations on Coach of the Year. It was well earned. And to anyone listening, I hope this message finds you well. Four years is a long time. That's 1,461 days, 35,063 hours, 2,103,797 minutes, and some abysmally large number of seconds. That is a serious amount of temporal currency to spend, and I have no buyer's remorse for having spent my four years at Westmont College, participating in cross country and track. I'm so grateful to the athletic department at Westmont College for affording me every opportunity to strive towards something greater than myself, and I'm grateful to the kinesiology department for pushing my mind to learn beautiful new information. I want to thank my coaches, Russell Smelly and Lindsay Connolly, as well as all the wonderful teammates I've had the pleasure of running with. I want to thank Ron Smith and Tim Hyduk for always letting me catch my breath for post-race interviews. I want to thank my family for their support in my running career. My time at Westmont was a series of ups and downs. I felt the thrill of a close finish at national championships and the disappointment of season ending injuries. I learned what it means to apply myself with full discipline and to dream big. But even more important, I learned through painful experience how to get back up after every setback. I learned that patience provides persistence, that smart work beats talent, and that consistency breeds confidence. I learned that being a part of a team is more fulfilling than anything I could ever do by myself. And even though my career at Westmont did not pan out how I dreamed, I have grown immensely. My freshman year at Nationals, I pulled out of the race due to the fear of failing after psyching myself out and putting too much pressure on myself. My senior year at Cross Country Nationals, I ran despite being injured. And after being tripped during the first mile, I was confronted by those same thoughts to pull out of the race for every single step afterwards. But I didn't. I chose to get back up and I chose to persist to the finish line. I said to Ron Smith afterwards that I was grateful to run even when I was injured because I didn't know how many more times I would race in the Westmont jersey. Little did I know that would be my last race. And while I wish I could pull on the maroon and white jersey a few more times, 
I will always carry with me what I have learned during my time at Westmore as an invisible jersey, and I will keep getting back up. I want to leave you with a quote that sums up what I have learned through my sport. It was said by Winston Churchill during the much more serious times after World War II, but I think it's so valuable in regular life as well. It goes like this. Success is never final. Failure is never fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you very much, and God bless. I got the, I got the power in me. Power in me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Coach Tom Fitzsimons with the track and field team. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate all the Golden Eagle recipients of the uh, 2020 year. And I'm sorry and I feel for those that lost their, uh, their remaining eligibility or their, uh, their career here in this, uh, these odd times. I'm feeling for you at this time. The athlete today I'm presenting for is Chena Underhill. Chena is a senior pole vaulter from Chicago, and I know next year the pole vault crew and uh, track and field team is going to miss her immensely. Chena competed for the Warriors for seven seasons. That would be four indoor track and field uh, seasons and three outdoor seasons. Um, in all seven, she qualified for the national championship. She's an Augustinian scholar and a multiple-time NAI academic All-American, and four times She's an NAI All-American in the pole vault. And what you have to do to become NAI All-American in a track and field event is on championship day, you need to finish in the top eight. It takes nothing in consideration of what you do in the regular season. Obviously, you need to qualify. But on championship day, what you do um, decides whether you're All-American or not. And Chino was able to do that four times um, in her seven championships. So. On what we now know as Chena's final track and field meet as a Westmont Warrior, um, Chena competed extremely well. Uh, I couldn't have asked anything more of her. She, she had a clean sheet, and what that means in pole vault is every bar that was set, she cleared on the first attempt. And all the way up until it was a personal best, what would have been a personal best height. And this is literally all you can ask of an athlete is to put themselves in a good position, put pressure on the competition, and to have an opportunity to do your best you've ever done in your entire life, that, that is just fine. We will take that every single time. So Gina did just that, and in her final meet as a warrior, that's how she went out as a completely composed competitor, um, enjoying the process the entire way. Another meet that I think is Maybe more important to tell you, to give you guys a feel of who Chena Underhill is that didn't have quite the same result, uh, but might mean a little bit more. It's her freshman year in South Alabama for the Outdoor NAI Championship in 2017. Chena had a great year. She qualified for nationals. And as I said earlier about a clean sheet in the most recent championship, Chena failed at her first three attempts. Um, and which results in a no mark, and you, you don't continue. That's it. And while I went up to China to say, like, I'm proud of your freshman year, um, there's more to come, uh, just whatever I was going to say doesn't really matter because what China said next was, it's okay, Tom. I have three year we have three years to do better. And I think she did exactly that. She took every moment, every practice, every competition, um, as a moment to get better, uh, as a moment to lead her teammates, and just truly enjoy uh, the entire process. So that moment on, I knew Chena was going to be a special person to coach, and she did not disappoint all the way until her final meet. Um, and then these are Chena's words, not mine, uh, from a conversation we had two weeks ago when we finally found out the NAI season was over. She said, for anyone with remaining eligibility at this time can hopefully be used to realize how special what you're doing is. And maybe on those days where you're not feeling it and you're not about to give 100%, you can realize that it was taken from you for the short period of time. And now you should use that to just go all in and realize there is, there is a finish line and these moments are special um, and just keep it going. And then for anyone that had their career cut short, she says, if you miss it, 
that means it was meaningful, you, meaningful to you, and you should feel blessed that you got this opportunity to grow and live with your, your teammates, your coaches, and yourself um, in these precious moments. And I just thought that was a beyond perfect um, way to look at it, a perspective to look at it. And uh, obviously, Chena is a truly special athlete that um, we'll miss here at Westmont. So this is where I planned on en ending uh, my speech here for Chena, but then she took it to another level last night. I'm watching Sports Center uh, with Scott Van Pelt, and they're doing this uh, awesome segment called Senior Night, where seniors at the high school level and college level across any single sport um, in America have obviously lost their spring season and maybe didn't get their didn't get their senior night when their parents go out with the flowers and the jersey and everything like that. And while Scott Van Pelt is doing an intro to a few teams he's going to talk about, we see Chena and the side um, coming down on a Westmont Warriors uniform pole vaulting. And yes, I'd much rather be uh, coaching Chena for this, this spring season. But if we're going to lose a season, um, I guess one way to keep bringing the positive is uh, get on Sports Center with a Westmont Warriors uniform. So go Chena there. Congratulations, Chena. I wish you the best. Um, it's a complete honor and joy to coach you these past three and a half years. And once again, congratulations to all the other 2020 Golden Eagle recipients. Thank you. I'm as a track and field athlete at Westmont. I am overwhelmed with gratitude for the lessons I've learned and the relationships I've formed. Every Monday at the start of practice, Coach Smelly gives us an admonition. Oftentimes, these admonitions contain a succinct golden phrase, such as, mood follows action, the hay is in the barn, be the kind of person you want to be with, vulnerability is essential to relationship, give more hugs, or don't drive through life with your foot on the brake. I have a story and growth moment to go with nearly every one of these sayings, except maybe the hugging one. <laughs> I'm still not much of a hugger. Today, I want to share with you what I've learned about goal setting. The Coach Smelly golden phrase that goes with this story is, have high aspirations and moderate expectations. My freshman year before Outdoor Nationals, I committed to a performance goal for the very first time. I actually wrote down in my little notebook a height I intended to jump, with accompanying process goals, of course. This act terrified me a little bit. Because I set a goal, there was a possibility I might not achieve it. And in fact, I did not achieve it. I failed quite spectacularly by no hiding for my first time ever at my first outdoor national championship meet. Fast forward to sophomore year, um, indoor nationals. This is the first big meet since my spectacular no hiding fiasco. I approached the meet with a little bit of apprehension and no real goals, besides not failing, which is really not a good goal. Um, so while I was doubting myself, Coach Tom at practice had been putting a bug in my ear that I could finish in the top five. He had goals for me and believed in me, even if I didn't. At the meet, I came in ranked in the bottom third of contenders, but actually finished in the top five, precisely at fifth place, and got a PR. That was a very happy day. Um, so since then, I've been learning to set goals in athletics and earnestly pursue them. This process is scary because unlike school, I can't control the outcome. All I can control is my input and my attitude. Regardless of how hard I work, sometimes the results simply don't follow. This year, Westmont Track and Field had some big goals, and we were sincerely chasing them. Since the season's been canceled, we won't ever get to achieve those goals. And honestly, that hurts. Being brave enough to care about something and really commit to it opens us up to pain and disappointment. That's why I was leery of goals in the first place. I'm going to keep on setting goals even though my athletic career is over. The process of pursuing goals is where good living and growing happens. I decided to care about track and field and invest in it. Along the way, this team became another home for me. I regret not being able to jump as high as I wanted, but I do not regret the evenings I lingered a little longer than necessary at the track to enjoy a conversation or even just to enjoy the silence and feeling of belonging. I don't regret the Friday afternoons I took a car full of freshmen to the beach to kick off the weekend, and I most definitely do not regret the little bit slower and less efficient warm-ups that were full of Coach Tom's stories and teammates sharing life. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Coach Smelly, for teaching me to be bold and pursue results I am not sure I can attain. I intend to keep living with direction, investing, and caring deeply. The results may not be what I envisioned, but the living along the way will be worthwhile. 
So here's to living with high aspirations and moderate expectations. It's an honor to introduce Jack Dickinson for the Track and Field Scholar Athlete Award, Golden Eagle Award. And Jack is uh, one of my more difficult people I ever had to recruit. I had to chase him all around campus and finally cornered him in the D.C. one day during his uh, freshman year and finally convinced him to come out for track. He'd been an excellent athlete in Alaska in the throws, and I couldn't see him uh, not doing it for the Warriors. When he finally conceded to do that, we went through a lot of work for him to become a person who learned how to relax and let things happen. He was a wrestler in high school, and he liked to wrestle with his implements, and they just didn't agree with him. And so we had so many good jaw sessions as we trained together and as he learned how to throw the implements. And those jaw sessions weren't anything to do with training. They were to do with life and questions and just having a good conversation. And he's excellent at that. As an English major, a good writer, he knows how to be incisive about what he's trying to say and what he's trying to ask. And it made it very fun to work with him. As an athlete, he led the team to three consecutive GSAC championships. He scored in all his throwing events. And actually, he is probably the all-time best combined throws uh, athlete in the history of the college, over five events from the 35-pound weight throw where he holds the record uh, in the javelin, shot put, discus, and hammer. An excellent athlete. And also, um, he's an erudite conversationalist because he cares about people He's this big, burly guy who has a soft heart. And he doesn't understand why everyone in the world doesn't try their hardest, because he wants to do his best all the time. I'm really looking forward to uh, keeping up with Jack over the years and becoming a long-term friend. I still feel like there are things I can learn from Jack Dickinson. I joined the track team when I came to Westmont. I wanted to play rugby. Uh, I didn't have a great high school track and field experience. Um, luckily for me, Smelly had other plans. When I first met Smelly, I was, it was orientation weekend, and I was going with the big line of kids up through the formal garden, following the big pipe guys, and an arm re reaches out and grabs me, and he's like, hey, come on to throw stuff. I, I told him no. Uh, and then Smelly, though, was persistent. He kept following me around, ambushing me in the D.C. or just around campus, asking me to join track, and finally I did. Um, and I'm so glad that he did do that. I'm so glad I'm on the track team. I've made some of my closest friends through track. My sophomore year, my friend Kristen came up to Alaska and spent the summer with me and my family. This past Christmas, uh, me and eight of my friends, some of whom already, have already graduated, spent this uh, week in Colorado, and then I can, and just at any given moment, I can count on Michael Oldak to start quoting lines from the Grinch with me. It's, I, I just love these guys. I'll be honest though, losing my senior year was difficult, um, but track is about more than just the meets. It's, it's about crowding 16 of us around the table in the DC. It's about having our team prayers before practice every day, and it's about cheering wildly for Thaddeus Kowalik when he makes a bowl of guacamole in under 10 seconds. Those moments are what has made track great, and those moments are why I'm so honored to receive this award. I want to thank Ron Smith and everybody else who's worked hard to put this event on. I want to thank Coach Smelly and Coach Brown and the rest of the coaches. You guys have been huge. Uh, you've just invested so much in me, and I'm so grateful. And I want to thank my teammates. I this track experience wouldn't have been the same without you guys. So thank you. team from nothing, I knew I needed someone on the team who would set an example of what it means to live a life of integrity, someone who is steadfast, someone who inspired those around them by humbly striving to be their very best. And then God gave me Allison Gonzalez. 
Allison came to me in November of 2018 and wanted to be a part of the new swim team that was going to start in the fall of 2019 for her senior year. Having not competed since 2016, we knew that at the start of the season, her timeline was going to be short. So we had to take every opportunity to get her ready to hopefully qualify for nationals in March. We knew this was a big goal, but she fought hard every single day to get there. On a daily basis, Allison would check in with me and ask me if there was anything more she could be doing. She wanted to make sure she gave everything to this last year, and she did. At our conference championship meet, Allison swam a lifetime best time and missed the individual qualifying time by one-tenth of a second in the 50-yard freestyle. However, Allison's swimming wasn't her main focus this year. It was the team. Allison poured herself into her teammates. She spoke words of truth and inspired them to be women of character. The team has described Allison as steadfast, which is defined as firmly fixed in place, immovable, firm in belief, determination, or adherence, loyal. As for Allison, her steadfastness has been the binding force in creating our team culture. She is a rock that continually points us to our Savior. Allison, thank you for humbly leading this team and guiding us through the rough waters as we navigated this first year together. You are a blessing to all those around you, and you will be missed. Hi, everyone. I cannot express how grateful I am to receive this award. I would like to thank my parents for being so supportive of me while I was away at college. I would like to also thank Westmont's athletic department and its benefactors for starting the swim program. I would like to thank my teammates for pushing me inside and out of the pool, and to my coaches for all the hours that they dedicated to my teammates and myself in order to ensure a successful season. I know they must have been asking God what they got themselves into on the first day of practice. To keep it short, I nearly died about five times during that two hours. <laughs> Being on the swim team was the last thing I expected for my senior year. I was expected to graduate in December 2019, and swim is a winter sport going into the spring semester. Last fall, I spoke with Jill, Coach Jill and somehow convinced her that it would be a good idea to keep me around. I had not swam competitively since high school, but was about to embark on a journey that would give me memories that I'll have forever. I can honestly say that joining the swim team was one of the best decisions of my college career. This year, I saw what it meant to have faith in God's plan for your life. Although that is easier said than done, had I decided to attend another school for swimming or water polo, I wouldn't have received a liberal arts education from Westmont. I wouldn't have been challenged in my convictions to find convictions in my faith and what I believe and who I want to be because of it. And lastly, I would have never become so close with 12 amazing women who pushed me in and out of the pool. Women who look after each other, striving to encourage one another to push harder when things got tough. Through it all, I realized that it didn't matter what I was swimming or how I was swimming it. What did matter is with I was doing it for the glory of God and having fun with my teammates. Knowing that this was truly once in a lifetime opportunity and getting to see a different lens in which the ones in which the Westmont community continues to influence the lives of its students. There's something about the Westmont athletic community that builds its students into leaders. I think it's the way we are led by faith and that our coaches want to shape the different aspects of our lives. I'm full of gratitude that I was able to experience being on the Westmont swim team, influenced by all the amazing people along the way. Thank you and stay safe.
Maddie Kerman is one of those athletes that every coach loves to coach. She has such a desire and work ethic to be the best version of herself in the game of volleyball and in the classroom. Patty came into this Westmont volleyball program as a recruited walk-on. In her freshman year, she was a non-starter. However, in each and every practice, she gave herself fully to become a better player. The area that stuck out most to me, though, was her willingness to listen. During every timeout, every coach's briefing, every discussion by the players, she would listen, nod, soak it in, and take action to become better. Her spring season of her freshman year, she suffered an ACL tear in practice and was sidelined for an entire calendar year, but Patty returned to volleyball with a vengeance. This past season, her junior year in school, but really her sophomore year in volleyball, was by far a breakout season. Patty was absolutely on fire. She was one of our opposite hitters in our 6-2 offense. There are many moments that stick out to me this season with Patty in our run to the national title championship game, but here they are in this order. During a GSAC home match versus Vanguard, we had practiced all week long to expose Vanguard's weaknesses, and one of those skills was the long tip shot to the corner. On match point, Patty had an opportunity to kill the ball in a traditional manner of hammering it, but she elected to throw that tip deep corner for the game and, wa- and match winning shot. Then, during our GSAC ter- conference tournament title game versus Menlo, she was absolutely unstoppable at the net, hitting with 10 kills, zero errors on 18 attempts for a resounding hitting percentage of 556. You could see the laser focus in her eyes and in the eyes of her teammates. In the national semifinals match versus Viterbo, Patty also played amazing and had seven kills, zero errors on 17 attempts for a hitting percentage of 412. In the title match against Marion, she had 12 kills, one errors on 23 attempts for a hitting percentage of 478. Yes, we lost. But this was the first time in history Westmont College Volleyball ever made it to a NIA, NAIA championship title game, and Patty Kerman was one of the shining beacons as to why we made it there. Her grit, perseverance, being coachable, positivity, mental fortitude, and talent are second to none. And let's not forget, she also is a dual major of economic business and communication studies with a 3.82 GPA. I couldn't be more proud to call her our Volleyball Golden Eagle Award winner. Hi everyone, my name is Patty Kerman. I'm on the volleyball team. Well, these last few weeks have been interesting. I hope that everyone's safe at home and healthy. You know, I'm sure many of you are, like myself, no stranger to strange events in life. If I've learned anything from my few years at Westmont, it's to always be ready for the unexpected. Me, my freshman year, we had the Thomas Fire, mudslides, from ACL. I was out of action my sophomore year. Now I got this whole pandemic thing. But Westman also taught me that through Christ, anything is possible, and I'm sure we'll get out on the other side of this just fine. Speaking of strange events in life, who would have thought that the kid who tore their ACL would play in the national championship game a year later? Not me. 2019 was a pretty good year for me and for Westmont Volleyball. We'll see how 2020 turns out, but nevertheless, I want to thank the trainers at Westmont and my mom and dad for helping me rehab my knee to get me back into fighting shape. I also want to thank my coaches and my teammates for their love and support during that time. And they reminded me just how much I love the sport and love this team. It made my decision a no-brainer to use my retro eligibility to play one more season as a warrior. My dad always reminds me of this, and it's true, Westmont is a truly special place to be. And I'll let you all in on a little secret as to why this team in particular is so special to me. It's not just because we're a talented group of girls. No, it's also because of the great amount of love we share for the sport and for each other. This team is like a second family to me. And I thank God every day for how lucky I am to have these girls in my life. I want to thank my coaches and my teammates for always believing in me and pushing me to be a better player and person every day. I also want to thank my parents and Uncle John for always supporting me in my athletic and academic endeavors throughout the years. I also want to thank my professors. I don't know how I got any studying done while in season, but here I am. So thank you and go Warriors. Stretch my hands to you. Life like this is what your life like. Try to live the life right. People really know you push your buttons like type right. This is like a movie, but it's really very lifelike. Every single night, right? Every single fight, right? I was looking at the grammar and I don't even like likes. I was screaming at my daddy, told me it ain't Christ like. I was screaming at the referee, just like Mike. Looking for a bright light. Seagull with your life like. Riding on a white bike. 
feeling like a sight bike Pressing on the gas to a Nova for a night like Dreaming at my dad and he told me it ain't Christ like But nobody never tell you when you're being like Christ Only ever seeing me, only when they need me Like if Tyler Perry made a movie for me It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce this year's Golden Eagle recipient for Westmont Baseball. Isaiah Leach is a fourth year senior outfielder, team captain, and small group leader of the men's group in our baseball program. He is a dynamic teammate and a true servant leader. I have found his exemplary leadership to be particularly remarkable given the extensive trials he has faced as a player. Plagued by injury throughout most of his collegiate career, Isaiah was steadfast in his commitment to putting his teammates first. He certainly was a part of plenty of big moments on the field, but in the background, he quietly carried the torch day in and day out, exemplifying the core values of our program. The selfless, often unseen contributions to team culture and spiritual growth amongst his teammates is what I will remember most about Isaiah. We always found humor in how Isaiah hit about a thousand any time we played in his home state of Arizona. And most of us will never forget the walk-off home run against UBC to kick off the 2019 campaign. And while his senior season was cut far too short, I have no doubt that he will handle this with poise and resolve as he has always done. The character attributes he has developed and refined during his time at Westmont will undoubtedly spill over into the type of husband, father, and community leader he will be. We are proud to call him a warrior, and we are immeasurably thankful for his contributions to the Westmont baseball program. Hi, my name is Isaiah Leach, and I am honored to be this year's Golden Eagle Award recipient for the baseball team. And there are a lot of people I have to thank, a lot of people who have shaped me and molded me into the man that I am today. First and foremost, with my family, specifically my parents, who have been my greatest fans throughout my life and have always supported me, have always come to my games and always pushed me to be better in the classroom, as well as on the field, as well as be a better man. Uh, to my fiance, who's been a constant rock of support, uh, thank you for all that you've done for me at my time at Westmont. And to Westmont uh, College, uh, from the faculty to the teachers in the comm department uh, who have shaped me, who have molded me, who have taught me so many things and invested in me as a person. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, also to the Westmont coaches on the baseball team, specifically Coach Ruiz, who's been there through my four years. Uh, just thank you for uh, seeing something in me, for believing in me, for pushing me to be a better baseball player, but also a better leader on the team and also a better man one day as well. And uh, I just thank you for what you see in me and how you've pushed me and taught me so much. I'd also like to thank my teammates. Uh, there's no other group of guys I'd rather be with for four hours a day than you guys uh, being on the field and just forming relationships and forming uh, br a brotherhood that is going to last far beyond my years uh, at Westmont and is just going to continue throughout my life. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for making baseball fun. Uh, as my sports career comes to an end, uh, I've had a lot of time to reflect and think back on what it has meant to me to be in sports and uh, to be a college athlete. And I think the thing that I'm most grateful for Westmont teaching me is that I'm more than an athlete, that sports doesn't define me, but who I am in Christ define me. And before I came to Westmont, I don't think I really thought that way. I thought that who I was on the field was who I was as a person and my identity was wrapped up in that. But through the, the teachers at Westmont, through uh, different coaches, different players, older players on the team, they've showed me the way. They've showed me uh, how to take sports as a gift from God and a way that God shows us how that we should live life. And I think that's something that Coach Ruiz has really taught me throughout my four years at Westmont is that if we don't walk away from the field learning how to be a better man, how to be a better husband, how to be a better brother, how to be a better friend, then we're missing the point of why God gave us sports. Uh, and now I just can see that in multiple ways throughout my time. And uh, when we fail, that we, we, get a, we need to focus on that next at bat or uh, focus on that next pitch or how we give ourselves up for our teammates for the betterment of the team. And those are lessons and uh, memories that will never fade and that will just, uh, I'm forever grateful for. <laughs>
I have the honor of introducing Josh Phillips as the Golden Eagle recipient in the sport of men's soccer. And as unique and exciting as our season was this past fall, this introduction is equally unique and exciting. And that is because I've never held one of these before. This, my friends, is a perfect transcript. One number, 4.0, one letter, A, not even an A with a little dash next to it, which I think in higher education they call an A minus. How does one achieve perfection? What about simply the pursuit of perfection? In our campus community, we might use the phrase pursuing excellence. When considering these questions, it dawned on me that I witness only about 10 to 15 percent of Josh's life at Westmont. There's a lot of time I'm not privy to at all. So, in light of this transcript and in concert with these questions, let me suggest three things that I believe we can learn from Josh about his excellence. First, He's thoughtful. Thoughtful people rarely are the first to answer a question, and rarely do they dominate conversations. They're measured, balanced, attentive, and cynical in a healthy sort of way. Secondly, he makes wise decisions. Wise decisions about his time, wise decisions about his company. And thirdly, once he commits, he stays the course. Josh does not live the life of the better offer as the rest of us, myself included, so often do. Thoughtful, wise, committed. While we may not achieve at the same level that Josh does, we'll get the most out of our endeavors if we follow his example. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. I regret that we can't be together, but I am grateful for the opportunity to be home and to spend some more time with my family. I think it might be one of those things where there are blessings even in the midst of trials. With that being said, I'm grateful to be the recipient of the Golden Eagle Award for Men's Soccer this year. When I think about the quality of men that we have on our team, I'm humbled that my coaches would choose me for this award, and I'd like to thank them, uh, Coach Wolf, Coach Whalen, Coach Eliason, and anybody else who may have had a hand in choosing me for this award. It means a lot to me, so thank you. Um, soccer, in my mind, is probably the truest team sport in the world. Uh, everybody's important. Everybody matters. And though they may not see this video, I'd actually like to take this opportunity to thank some of my teammates in the last two years who have been really important to me, starting with Sam Martin. Um, Sam graduated last year. He, he is a kind, good-natured personality that I think stems from the genuine love he has for others and for God. But he also has this real steely determination inside of him that I think he really only knows the true depths of. Um, I admire that and I try to model that in my life too, the way he did for me. However, if I were to choose one person on our men's soccer team who more than anybody else really models grit, perseverance, and desire, I'd choose Memo Mendoza. Uh, he overcame a lot of significant challenges in the last year through his sheer, sheer willpower alone. Um, I'm grateful for the model that he set for me and my teammates in that regard. And lastly, I'd like to thank Sam Toscano. Uh, more than anybody else on our team, Sam encourages me to be the best that I can be, um, the best player, the best student, the best man of God. He demands that of me, and he actually believes that I can do it too, which is important to me. I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful for all the guys who have had a positive impact on my life um, through this team. We've had a lot of good times together, and I think we'll have a lot of good times ahead. And those are the things I hold on to in days like this. 
uh, I owe the Golden Eagle Award to them. So thank you. What a year it has been. If I'm being honest, when I reflect on most days throughout a season, I am left with the same thought. What a day it has been. Sometimes it is sparked by reflecting on how well the team performed. Other times it is getting real about a difficulty a player is facing. And my favorite times are thinking about the laughter we shared as a team in the van or over a meal. One thing that is constant in every reflection is Cade. Cade is present because she shows up each day. On the days the team performs well, Cade is leading from the top. She is currently ranked top 10 nationally, eight and two, and undefeated in conference play. Her results come from the way she prepares to play and her love of the game. It happens many times each year that an opposing coach or official comments to me how much fun it is to watch Cade play. She is a fierce competitor and uses her athleticism in a way you don't see very often in women's tennis. Even on the days Cade doesn't get the results she would hope, she walks off the court with pride, knowing she controlled her effort and attitude. I have had the honor to walk through some pretty tough situations with Cade. Whether she is dealing with something personally or helping a teammate with something they are facing, she commits to being present and doing whatever is needed to be done. She is a light of truth and a testament to how we are to love those around us. As I mentioned earlier, my favorite days are the ones when I reflect back on the laughter our team shared. And yet again, most of the days Cade is to thank. The joy she chooses to carry herself is spilled out over our whole team. Cade, you are incredibly resilient. My mom said it best earlier this year when she told me, Cade is one of the best things that has happened to you. I couldn't agree more. I am eternally grateful Westmont was a stepping stone on God's path for your life. I have complete confidence that wherever you go, And whatever you do, you will make it better than you found it. Because that is who you are and what you do. Hi there, everyone. I want to start out by saying that I am so excited and honored to be receiving this award, along with all of the other impressive student athletes that are being honored. I'm saddened, though, that we can't all be together in person to celebrate but I hope that each of us is able to celebrate with our families and loved ones in one way or another. I'm even more sad when I think about all of the winter and spring season athletes, not just at Westmont, but across the country who don't get to finish their seasons, especially my fellow seniors. My heart goes out to those athletes and of course to all of the people across our country and across the globe who are being impacted in big and small ways by the pandemic that we're facing. As difficult as all of this is, it's been a good reminder to me, and I think it can be a good reminder to us all, that simply some things are bigger and more important than our sports. Having said that now though, I wanna take a second to talk about my sport and the impact that it's had on me. I'm one of the lucky people who gets to call myself a collegiate athlete and who can say that playing the sport that I love has supported me to be able to attend and afford college. On top of those blessings, because of tennis, I've been able to attend an institution that's exposed me to the true gospel of Christ, and that's inspired me to begin my faith walk. So because of tennis and because of Westmont, I now know Jesus, which is something that I will forever be so grateful for. When I reflect on my last four years at Westmont, I'm filled with emotion and amazement 
in the ways that I've grown. I didn't expect that my life would be changed so greatly and in so many different ways. On top of giving birth to and developing my faith, in my time at Westmont, I've sparked academic passions in both of my majors, kinesiology and psychology, which I didn't expect at all. I've met friends and I've met mentors who I foresee having lifelong connections with because of Westmont. And also because of Westmont, I've developed as an athlete and I've grown in my passion for tennis far beyond what I'd expected. So when I say that I'm grateful for this college and that I'm not ready for my tenure to end, especially like this, I really do mean it. So I wanna take a second to give a couple of thank yous to just some of the people who made my time here possible. First, thank you to my family and to all of my loved ones for supporting me every step of the way, but especially for supporting me in my decision to attend Westmont. Thank you to my professors for challenging and pushing me in the classroom, oftentimes harder than I wanted or expected, but thank you for the ways that you made me grow. I wanna say thank you to our athletic department and all of the work that everybody there does. And thank you to everyone who supports and attends our fine athletic events for our great programs. It's you who make it possible for us to call ourselves warriors. Thank you to the previous women's head coach, Kendall McManigal, for recruiting me and for making it possible for me to play here. And thank you to my team, to all members past and present, and especially to my coach, Ellie. I owe the most to you guys, I think, because it's you who made every match, every practice, and every day so special. You guys previewed the kingdom of God in my life in the ways that you've accepted and supported me, pushed and challenged me, and especially in the ways that you've loved me. Now, <laughs> I could go on for hours talking about our team and talking about our coach, but I want to keep it short. So I'll finish in saying that I will forever be grateful for each one of you and the role that you played in my life. And it's you guys that make saying goodbye to Westmont so hard. Finally, thank you and praises to God for putting Westmont in his plan for me. I pray and I hope that as I continue in my life, that Christ will always remain preeminent, like this college has taught me. Thank you again for this exciting honor. And whether this is the end of my time here or not, I want to say thank you, Westmont, for the ways that you have shaped me. God bless. It is my honor to introduce Brooke Porter as this year's Women's Soccer Recipient of the Golden Eagle um, Award. Brooke exemplifies dedication, perseverance, and passion in everything she does. She embodies Colossians 3.23, which tells us, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Brooke is studying to get a degree in biology and has poured herself into this field. She is a co-author on a research paper conducted here at Westmont that was submitted to the Blood Cancer Journal. She's also done research um, and internships with the Mayo Clinic and the University of Würzburg in Germany, as well as research at the University of Bath. Here at Westmont, she shares her knowledge of biology as an anatomy tutor and a biology tutor. Uh, Brooke's soccer journey has been a challenging and inspiring one. She spent her first three seasons on the bench due to multiple season-ending injuries. Many people would have called it quits with so much adversity thrown their way, but Brooke stayed the course, working countless hours in physical therapy. That, pers that perseverance paid off this year as she led her team as a captain to a 2019 GSAC regular season title and made a run in playoffs that ended in the quarterfinals. She played over 1,100 minutes, scoring three goals and one assist, and um, was just a remarkable leader through the process. Brooke embodies um, many of the values of our program and Westmont College. Congratulations, Brooke. I would like to take this time to thank the influential people in my life without whom I'd not be standing here today. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my coaching staff. 
Jenny, thank you for stepping into the role as first year head coach and embracing our culture with grace and fervor. I also really appreciate the way you care and encourage academics in general. Dan, thank you for being real and supportive of everything I decide to pursue and thank you for encouraging me to push through the difficult times. Dor, I'm so thankful for everything you've done for me. Thank you for always advocating for me and believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. I deeply appreciate all the investment you've made in helping me grow as a person on and off the field. This coaching staff is truly something special. Secondly, I'd like to thank my professors. Thank you for being so understanding when I have to miss class for soccer. My professors really care for me as an individual and wanted to work with me to maximize my learning regardless of the crazy soccer schedule. Next, I wanna thank my teammates. You guys make learning on the road so much fun. I enjoy all of our bus ride study sessions and the incredibly long makeup lab sessions with my muck. The way you guys strive for excellence in the classroom really does encourage me and push me to do the same. Lastly, I wanna thank my parents. You guys push me to be the best person I can be on the field and in the classroom. I'm so thankful for the never ending support and love you guys show me through allowing me to pursue education at Westmont while also playing collegiate soccer. From having you guys take me to club games every Saturday growing up to allowing me to spend my summers pursuing science in new and exciting ways, you really are one of the biggest blessings in my life. Lastly and most importantly, I wanna thank God Thank you for the ability and the health to pursue soccer and education. Glory be to God. I'm so thankful to be receiving this award today. Thank you. Hey, I got the power. I got the power. I got the, I got the, I got the power. Okay, I am thrilled to tell you today a little bit about Maud Ranger. She is our two-time uh, Golden Eagle Award winner uh, for women's basketball. And as I think about in this very short time I have to tell you about her, a verse um, from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7 comes to mind. And that verse says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And when I think of Maude and I think about what she's embodied in her time as a student athlete at Westmont, I think about those three words, power, love, and self-discipline. Her work ethic has been second to none. She has absolutely maximized her ability on the court as an athlete because of her discipline, as well as in the classroom where she has had an intellectual curiosity to thrive and on the court, uh, became an All-American um, this year as uh, averaging a double-double um, at only 5'7 in height and finishing uh, ranked fourth in the nation in defensive rebounding at that height tells you the kind of heart that she has. And I think that that kind of leads me into that next word of hers, which is power. Uh, she was someone who brought um, just power and an attacking mentality to everything that she did as a warrior. And when the moments were the biggest is when she was her best. She, uh, all four years, won the GSAC conference tournament. Um, and again, that's just an example of her being at her best and helping her team be her best when her best was needed. And then the third word of that that I think that she embodies is the word love. And that is something I'm really proud of Maud for how she um, learned in her career here how to be a leader, not just by example, which she always had, but also vocally and interacting with her teammates to not just be her best, but inspire others to be their best too. And uh, I know that you'll really enjoy hearing from Maude today. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for listening in and making it possible for this event to still take place by being so adaptable. I know that we're in a situation of high stress, confusion, and high uncertainty with regards to what the future holds. So it means a lot to still take time to recognize 
the hard work put in by each and every one of the student athletes nominated for this award. If I were standing in front of you all, I would have the whole room pause and give you all another round of applause for what you've achieved here at Westmont. It takes an incredible amount of discipline, perseverance, and grit to excel as both a student and an athlete at a school like ours. So from behind the screen, I would like to congratulate you all for what you've accomplished at Westmont. I've thought a lot about what I wanted to share with you all in this time about what being at Westmont has taught me. Curiously enough, what our world is going through couldn't relate more to the most important lesson that I've learned in my time here, the one about struggle. Now, I've heard the word struggle being used in many different ways. When people say that word, they usually follow it nicely by saying that struggle is inevitable and that we shouldn't fear our struggles because they make us grow. But if I'm being honest with you, I didn't think twice about struggle when I first committed to Westmont because I thought I already had experienced it. Well, I was wrong. When I reflect on my time at Westmont, the most impactful memories I have aren't the ones of when things went smoothly. What I truly remember are the times when I faced unexpected trials, those times when I was suppressed on every side. For four years, Westmont has challenged me and put me in situations to test me. Whether it be in the classroom, through rigorous academics, finding myself confused and frustrated with my trouble to grasp a foreign concept, trying to solve a problem and getting it wrong over and over, or on the court, being challenged day in and day out, having to push through limits I didn't even think I could push past, having to run for an entire practice because my team couldn't make a layup, which I had to throw away those shoes after growing a couple blisters. But what I've realized is that the institution of Westmont never intended for me to have an easy, flowing four years where things went my way. Instead, this school has taught me what true perseverance looks and feels like by challenging me. Although we all have a vision of how we want things to go in our, li in our life, sometimes the timing and the place don't match our reality. In fact, oftentimes the right place seems like the wrong place and the right time seems like the wrong time. But that is where we have the opportunity to take responsibility, meaning the ability to respond to the situation we're placed in, no matter how difficult it is. Westmont has shown me that even when we don't have control over the situation we're in, we always have control over how we choose to respond. Throughout my years here, I have witnessed great acts of bravery and grit in seemingly impossible situations. For example, when the school administration fought to keep our campus alive during the 2018 Thomas fires, or even this year, when my undersized team battled every day through uncontrollable emotional and physical pain. What Westmont has taught me is that strength comes from struggle. When we choose to look at a struggle as an opportunity to grow better, stronger, and wiser, that is when we truly succeed. Now, I could have gone to a less demanding school or played for an easier basketball program. By committing to Westmont, I took a risk, a risk to struggle, to be challenged, and to even fail over and over. But ultimately, what I've learned in my time here is that it's impossible to live without taking any risks or exper experiencing any type of failure, unless we live so carefully that we might as well not live at all. I am so grateful to have taken this risk because great opportunities often arise while facing great adversity. As one of my favorite authors once said, it is tempting to play it safe in life, but ultimately taking no risk is the greatest risk of all. So I hope that in this difficult time, we can all keep fighting through our struggles and be brave enough to seek for those opportunities to overcome the challenges around us. Lastly, I want to congratulate everyone once more and thank those who have made it possible for me to be here today. I'd like to thank my coaches, Westmont, my professors, my family, my friends, and all those who have supported me along the way. Thank you.
These are uncommon times. Jordan Spazcheck is an uncommon man who is built for these uncommon times. Jordan is unique because he cares deeply for others and he cares for the most important reasons. He loves Jesus. He cares about helping each person find their sweet spot. He helps them realize their finest. He has done this for me, for our coaches, and for his teammates. The day before Jordan left to go home for the rest of his Westmont College career due to the coronavirus, we spent the day together. I wanted to show him some of my favorite places. I wanted to have more of Jordan and to give him more of me. And I also wanted to create our own new memories that would last a lifetime. I think we did that. Jordan is that important to me because much in the same way he spoke into the lives of every one of our players, Jordan has also transformed me. He has made me want to be a better coach, a finer husband, and certainly the best father I could ever want to be. He did it by helping me bring out my very best. That is what Jordan Spascheck does for others. He takes them to meet their finest qualities, and he does it from the lap of Jesus. It is a great honor for me to introduce to you, Jordan. Hi, Westmont family. I wish we could be together, but I'm still excited to be here because I get to talk about Coach Moore and the way in which he impacted both my life and experience at Westmont. Though the cliche, words can't express how I feel, has never been more true. Allow me to at least attempt. My pastor once said that the greatest gift a father can give is presence. As I reflect on my time at Westmont, I think first of Coach Moore and his efforts to be present with me. I remember our daily talks, how still he was as he looked me in the eye, how he listened with the utmost concern, he made me feel like the most important part of his day. He spent time with me not because it was in his job description or because he hoped Gail Beebe would walk by and see him investing in one of his players. He did it simply because that's the kind of gracious and giving heart he has. I can recall a certain road trip with Coach where we asked each other a variety of questions. One of those questions proceeded, after having a conversation with someone, what impression would you want them to have? I responded with, I would want them to feel safe enough to know that they can come back and visit again. Truth is, I said this because it's how I feel after spending time with Coach. Whether we were discussing Carol Dweck's famous article, The Perils and Promises of Praise, Mere Christianity, or Had No Agenda at All, there was a common denominator. I always left knowing that I could come back a sweet assurance that both Coach and our Father in Heaven offer. Because I've been afforded the opportunity to spend uninterrupted time with Coach Moore, I've noticed something about him. Something other than the fact that he loved to talk about his wife, Rachel, and two daughters, Jacqueline and Jesse. I noticed that he is fierce, yet gentle. He's fierce enough to win a battle against Goliath, yet he's so gentle that he'd be the first to offer him help. His fierceness doesn't come via screaming at his players or cursing and shaming them for mistakes, but rather is manifested in his relentless pursuit to exhort his players to improve, but also affirm his belief in them. His gentleness provides an aroma of safety, a certain fragrance that is reserved for only the most humble and secure. I remember calling my mom immediately after I got off the phone with Coach Moore for the first time. I described to her the gentle calmness of his voice and the confidence I had in knowing this was a man who spent a lot of time with Jesus. After two years with him, I've been reassured of this truth. Coach, thank you for challenging me to read often, ask hard questions, and spend time in professor's offices exploring my curiosity. This enabled me to, for the first time in my life, begin to think for myself, what a gift that has been. As I enter into the next chapter of my life, 
I know you'll be standing behind me, pushing me with momentum into a lifelong journey of learning. Yet somehow, I know you'll also be in front of me, cheering me on, leading the way. You are the best coach in the world. Warriors General Manager Bob Myers said, success is when the people who know you best love you the most. Well, I'll end with a recent tweet from someone who knows Coach best, his brother-in-law, Steve Lavin. Congrats to Coach John Moore on receiving 2020 NAIA National Coach of the Year honors. Best person ever. Best coach. Loving husband. Ideal dad. Best brother. Inspiring teacher. Listener. Master mentor. Role model. Competitor. Coach Moore, thank you. You are the best man I've ever met. I love you. It's wonderful to be with you doing this Golden Eagle Award dinner via virtual reality. And one of the things that I just love about this banquet is the opportunity it gives us not only to honor and celebrate athletics generally, but to really honor and celebrate what matters most at Westmont. And that's the combination of great athletics and great academics. I'm so proud of each one of you who's been honored tonight. I wish we were together so that I could do it face to face. I love the evening. I love the event. And I personally uh, particularly enjoy hearing both from the coaches uh, as they honor you and then your response. I'm always inspired by it. I've always learned from it. And it reminds me of the things that matter most to me. I too was once a student athlete and I love the competitive juices that flow as a result of athletics. But as I've gone on in life, I've just come to grow and appreciate all of the ways in which athletics pulled it, poured into me the disciplines that I needed in order to be successful. And as I think about the season that we're in right now, what a bizarre period of history, what a bizarre period of time for the college. But if there's anything that you learn from athletics, it's how do you make real-time adjustments in game time? And in the midst of this, you think about all of the adjustments that we're having to learn how to make, and yet at the same time continuing to persevere in order to complete our responsibilities. I think about this whole atmosphere as a great learning opportunity for strategic adaptation. I think about halftime adjustments. I think about mid-race adjustments. I think about the disciplines that you've undertaken in order to prepare yourself to be a great competitive athlete in whichever sport you're being honored for tonight. But more than anything, athletics pours into us the opportunity to choose how we'll respond and how we'll prepare. And the game time is just such a small bit of our total experience as an athlete. We know that it's uh, quiet hours of personal practice and team practice where we gain the capacity to excel in the games, in the meets, on courts, and in playing fields. Tonight, it's my privilege to honor Michael Holdeck, the Men's Cross Country uh, Award winner, Sarah Claude, the Women's Cross Country winner, Josh Phillips, the Men's Soccer winner, Brooke Porter, the Women's Soccer winner, Patty Kerman, the Women's Volleyball winner, Jordan Spaschick, I hope that was right, Jordan, the men's basketball winner, Cade Pearson, the women's tennis winner, Gina Underhill, the women's track and field winner, Jack Dickinson, the men's track and field winner, Allison Gonzalez, the women's swimming winner, and Maude Rogier, the women's basketball winner. Now, as I try to get each of these in my mind, I know each of you with a range of familiarity, and some of you I know very well. But each time that I've watched you compete, either as individuals or as a team, you remind me of what I love about Westmont. You are so well prepared, you're such great teammates, and you're disciplined to not only compete in your area of expertise, 
but also you learn how to be great students while being great athletes. Tonight is not the way that we had hoped to be able to honor you, but as you go forward in life, it's my hope that the memories that you take from your time at Westmont will always live on in you and that you can become a great expression of that Westmont warrior spirit that goes anywhere in the world and leads and serves effectively. Thank you for the contribution you've made to our college. Thank you for the contribution you've made to life.